we always have heard that David was a man after God's own heart. And while I understand what people mean by that when they say it, I always think it that it was more of David pursuing after God's heart. In other words, David knew who he was, but David wanted to be like God. David pursued after God's heart because David could see how the iniquities of those things around him didn't make sense, but he wanted God and his righteousness to be made manifest in Israel as a nation while he was alive. And you see that when he wants to slaughter his enemies and he wants to throw away workers of iniquity, and yet David himself likewise did commit sin. So he, he found a balance that the reality of his seeking after God also contradicted his sinfulness before God. But he always returned back to seeking God because whenever he sinned or whenever he was righteous, he sought the Lord. And that's the way we should be. Whether you sin or whether you fail, whether you succeed, or whether you're blessed out of your mind, or whether you're struggling today, if you're seeking after God, then you're like David in Psalms. And Psalms should bring you comfort. There should be one in there that fits you. And you should be able to say, I'm seeking after God's own heart. So you would be a person after God's own heart. In Psalm 6, and sharing it in evotional or devotional, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Mine eye is consumed because of my grief. It waxes old because of mine enemies. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. David cries out to God first. He asks to be delivered from God's anger first. He wants to restore his relationship with God first. He knows he's done something wrong, so he says, don't rebuke me even though you're right. But according to your mercy, God, remember that I'm weak. So don't be angry and in your fierce anger and displeasure with what I've done, God. Have mercy upon me because, God, I feel the consequence of my sin. I feel the angst within me and I need healing from it for sin has caused the corruption to work inside me and it is causing me to become more and more fearful and mindful of the reality of death. And God, there is no place for me in death because I want to remember you. I want to know you. I want to give you thanks for everything and all that I am. So he says, return, come back to me, God, for I feel you're missing from my life. He says, deliver my feelings, deliver my soul, deliver my heart. Please, God, cause me to rejoice again and not kill me or allow me to die. For I would give you thanks. For in praise I was rejoicing. For in love I was delighting in you. And he says, but now I'm mourning and I'm missing you, God. And all night long the agony of my desire is reaching out for the living God. I cry out and I cry day and night. And he says, my eyes consume because of grief. He says, I can't see. I've gotten old before my time because I weep. I have been made a laughing.
lifting stock from my enemies because I seek after you. Until you come to me, O oh God, I can do nothing. I cannot see, I cannot think, I cannot feel. So deliver me, God, and have mercy upon me. And then as he considers, well, what God has heard, he knows because he's been real, because he's known that when he's been real with God, God is real with him. So he looks and says, deliver me and depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. For you don't seek after God as I have wept and sought the Lord. You seek to destroy me for I have fallen. You seek to chastise me for I have failed in what I set out to do. But God will hear my prayer. God has heard my pleadings. God has felt the depth of my tears. And God will return to me. And when he does, he will judge you. When we see a man of God fail and fall, when we see anyone trip, stumble, and fall flat on their face, when at any time a person sins, we're not called to condemn. We're called to be tender, entreating, reaching out with heartstrings to draw them in and to say, oh, my child, you're so dirty. Let me wash you up. Let me cleanse you up. Let me help you to get to the place where you rejoiced with God, where you celebrated the goodness of being right with God. Let me help you to find that place again of knowing God because your sin has separated you, not only from God, but from me, your friend. Remember that, for it was in mercy that David cried out to God not in judgment, not for righteousness, but for mercy to himself, that we, as Jesus said, having received the consolation with which we were consoled, shall extend likewise the same manner to those who are in need. Will you not be merciful as you were given mercy? Would you not be forgiving as he has forgiven you? Would you not love as he has loved you. That is Psalm 6. And that is what God desires for us to know. Because, O oh Lord, my God, in you do I put my trust. <laughs>